Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meet, and uh, in this tutorial we're looking at uh, Cinema 4D to Unity 3D again. Uh, the last tutorial was about exporting just the geometry, and in this uh, tutorial I want to be looking at getting your UV, your UVs for your objects across into Unity, and um, some of the gripes that I've seen ad uh, people have on the Unity forums about oh. You know, I've set my material up in this way in cinema, and then when I view it in Unity, it doesn't look the same, what's going on. So we're just going to cover some of that today. Um, so I'm going to start off with the uh, file that we made. Um, if you remember, we uh, I've got a, um, a folder in my documents called Unity Projects, and inside of that I've got some projects. And last time I set up one, which is C4D test, and inside the assets folder that I set up an imports folder and saved my cinema 4d file so I'm just gonna open that up in cinema and we've just got this simple scene set up and uh, if you remember rightly this is what it comes in like in uni so if you pop back to cinema 4d I'm just gonna create a material I'm gonna call it checkers um, we don't need a reflection channel and in the color channel in the texture slot I'm going to open that up and in my imports we've got a text folder that I created and I just put this uh, checkers texture in there so I'm going to load that in and I'm going to put that in my box and um, I'm just going to save the file now if we open unity back up it updates and it matches what we've got in Cinema 4D. So that makes sense. If we go back to Cinema 4D, you can actually see that this material is on this box and this box is a cube. And if I go to uh, my select tool and go to the polygon select, I can't select any polygons. And that's because this cube is a primitive. Um, I haven't made it edible, ed uh, an edible poly object yet. So these, uh, this the the way that the check has been displayed across my cube is because of if I go to this tag, it says that it's on its projection type is UV mapping. Now there is actually no UV tag here, so this UV mapping is being done internally by Cinema 4D, and when I save it out into my file and then go into Unity, what's basically happened is that. Uh, the UV mapping has been sort of crushed down in the FBX export, which is doing in the background and sending it over to Unity. And to demonstrate this, if I um, if I go to select this tag and go down to the tile repetitions and just say, okay, well, let's have two there and two there. A lot of people would set up their material, you know, save their scene or export it as an FBX and go back into Unity and expect him to say the, see the same thing. But it doesn't happen. And it's because the actual UVs for the object internally are exactly the same as they was before. I'm just tiling the material. And that information isn't being taken across. Actually, in Unity as well, if I select the box object itself, um, it, it will come up with this checkers color material. Hmm. And change that to white as well because it should be um, you can actually do the same thing within unity so I could put two here or even two there that might help and you'd get the same result as you were getting in cinema when you're putting two here and two here and there's a problem with this say we had a couple of objects set sharing the same material when I Put the tiling up here it would do it for all my objects so what if i only wanted to have my box looking like this and the tiling for say this plane a lot higher maybe 10 well you couldn't do that unless you actually do it via the uvs in cinema so let's get down to that also projection as well because it's all internal if i changed the mapping to this to I don't know something like spherical as a good example because it's quite extreme you think oh yeah cool that looks pretty good it doesn't but uh, so we save that you go back to unit and think yeah brilliant nope not happening it just 
it doesn't want to know and it's because it's not actually got any UVs so let's create some UVs well there's one way of doing it we could select our cube um, yeah, let's, uh, I suppose let's leave it on spherical and then it doesn't really matter then uh, select our cube either press C or click this button make editable so we've made it editable um, uh, I'm going to select the tag and put it to UV mapping so that's what our UVs look like again our tiling on our thing is still on 2 I suggest putting this back down to 1 because the tiling doesn't come across anyway you just leave that at 1 so that's the UVs that's going to come out of Cinema 4D which is pretty much what we had originally so we'll get back um, oh yeah, I wondered why it went down it then. It's because the tiling in in Unity was still on two as well. So you want to leave all of that on one. Uh, I don't know why that's offset. There we go. So that's what it should look like. So that and that is the same. Okay. So what uh, we've already talked about me changing the mapping type and it not actually doing anything really. Although it was quite curious why when I set this to spherical and saved it that it actually did change the UVs. Ah, you'll see that it didn't that time because it's now it's got a UV tag. Um, this tag is holding all the information. By changing this thing on the, um, you know, all these projection types on the material, it's only doing that internally in Cinema 4D. It's not actually putting it to the UV map, which is this tag, this UV tag. This is what saves all the UV information. So what if we do want to change the projection? Well, that's when I'd say that we go to, excuse me, go to the uh, BP UV edit. We go to that. We've got our box selected. Um, let's just zoom out again. Um, we got the cube. Yep, there we go. So we can select all our UVs, and you can see this darker grey square that represents our our map. So let's um, let's actually open our texture so we can see it in here. Now, this is where you can change the projection. Here, you go into projection. You can have a flat projection, which will look like that. It's obviously flat. Uh, we can have a frontal projection, so it kind of you know, it kind of spits the texture out of the camera. So if we if we did this and then saved our file and then went back to Unity, there we're getting that sort of dodgy sort of um, projection out of it. Let's try the sphere. And you can see why it came in like it did earlier. So if we uh, if we move all this to here, I'm sure we can select this. Yeah, there we go. We can make that flat. So if I come at the top and then front all that, so you can see you get a lot more control of how your UVs are being set out there. So let's choose all of them again. Um, that's what a cylinder would look like, cubic, cubic two, box, shrink wrap. So that's an interesting one. And also we can, um, if you, if we did want it to tile, but just for this object, like I said before, if we tiled it within side unity, that's great, but it's going to tile it for every single other object that is using um, this material. But you can actually do it via the UV, so you can have a different tiling pattern for each object using the same material. So this, for instance, if I grab the uh, scale tool and just scale this up, and then saved within Unity, is going to give this appearance. Now let's uh, let's assign this to something else as well. Um, okay, so let's go back to our standard view, just to make things a bit more visible. 
grab our sphere, make it editable, whack this checker on it, and go back to our UV edit. Okay, there we go. Uh, got our attributes here. Coordinates, yeah, okay, cool. <sighs> UV selection. Control A, so we select all the UV points. Our texture seems to have, there we go, disappeared. There we go. It's back again. We can actually uh, size this up. I'm looking for the options here. Oh well, so we've got our scale. And we're actually scaling up our UVs. That'll do. That's pretty enough. For the purposes of this, it's a little bit janky, but, you know, it, it shows what we needed to show. I've saved that now. Come across here. Brilliant. And as you can see, when I click on the sphere, it's using the checkered color material. Saves this object. Click the ground there, I think. There we go. So is this object. Um, but you can see that they're being mapped differently. This one has got far more checkers on it than this sphere object, which is what we want. And you can see that they're using the same object because if I start tiling it within Unity, it starts tiling both of them. So that's how you go about getting your UVs into uh, Unity. And obviously you can UV in any other way as well. So you can, uh, let's have a look. This box, let's grab this box. Let's go back to, the, oh no, UV edit, sorry. I'm gonna select our UVs, I'm gonna cubic. There we go, there we go again. Let's get our texture back. Um, we've got all of our UVs here and they're, they're all selected so that's why it only looks like one's moving but we can select one face of this and then move it back and uh, if I hit T that changes the scale tool little quick tip for you um, if you press E it selects the move tool if you press T it selects the scale tool and R is for the rotation tool so I'm just gonna hit T so I can scale this down and if we wanted to we could have one side showing this and then we could grab this side and say oh I don't know um, I only want it showing this black and shrink it down there and then you could have this side and say oh I've grabbed both of them there Let's grab our move tool. Select that. We could, uh, you could even enlarge on that if you wanted to. So let's press T, make that bigger. You could say, yep, yeah, I'm having loads on that one. And we could grab these two. I'm just going to do these at the same time because it's. You know, scale them down and then you could rotate so they're off kilter and then we can save that and all of that information should come across into Unity and that's how you're basically getting getting that across uh, I think colors come across for Cinema 4D so if we um, go back into standard view, I'll create another material. We'll just call this floor. Um, let's make this red or like a nice orange or something. Something putrid. There you go. Oh, lovely. Something a bit brighter. If we do that and uh, apply this to our floor. Come on. There we go. Save that. Open up Unity. It does take the color channel.
from Cinema 4D. Okay, so that's just something to bear in mind. Um, but it won't take the reflectance channel, I don't think. So um, let's have a look at this. Let's make this really quite mental. We've got a big specular highlight there. I'm pretty sure that doesn't come across. Yep. Uh, obviously in Unity now we've got PBR um, materials. That's physically based rendering. Um, so this is a physically based shader. So it tries to conserve energy in the way you'd expect, but I'm going to do another tutorial about that in Unity. Um, but most of your material properties, apart from any textures you take out of Cinema 4D, it will read the color channel. I'm pretty sure it doesn't uh, read the luminance channel, so let's just whack a luminance in there so you can see that there's this sort of red hue to it now. If I save that uh, in Unity, I, it, it's not going to see that either. And it's because the, um, the way the, shade, uh, the material is set up in Cinema 4D, Unity has no idea how to read that information apart from the color channel. So um, it will take your textures and stuff like that, but it won't um, take any of these. You'll have to set them up separately. So like the reflectance um, in Unity in its shader, that would come under the smoothless factor. So that controls your specular pretty much. So it's not very good at showing it here but you can see that the um, you can see in the shadows actually where this is changing and you can also choose whether it's metallic or not so the more metallic it is the more um, yeah there you go so all your shader stuff in Unity, you're going to have to work out in here. So it's very basic what it takes from Cinema across to uh, to Unity. Although saying that, Unity does support substance materials, and so does Cinema 4D now. So you can bring substance materials into Cinema. And again, that's something for another tutorial. But this is basically how you get your UVs into Cinema 4D. Um, and... You know, that's a good example. We've chosen what each polygon's UVs are doing. Uh, it's a very simple way of showing you that. Um, in this case. But obviously this map could be a character and you may have your head portion there and your body portion here. And you lay out the body portions of your polys there and the the head portions there and then when it comes into unity it will be correct um, and obviously that won't just be for the I mean in this case we're just taking the color channel across but you'd probably make a normal map as well that you'd bake from your model um, so you can get some nice bump and stuff like that in there and uh, we'll be going over that in a later tutorial but this is predominantly just for the UV so that's how you get your UVs into a uh, unity 3d um, cheers guys. Bye.